Hello and welcome to Meet the Parents, a brand new episode. Our guest this week, uh, obviously myself and the owner are here as normal, but our guest this week is... Uh, Oma's finest. He's off the, the Heasy Fish Heasy Manese. He goes by the name of Keezy. Holy like shit. Like Connor that. Keys. I love that. Yeah. I'd have said, you know one from the Jack Chair and Yom's podcast? You know one from Oma. <laughs> 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 Just Oma in general. Yeah. Are you Dexter or Can Yums? I'm Yums. He's Yums. Yeah, Yums for fuck's sake. No, we love him. No, I have no idea. Yum, so yums. why is Mickey Dexter? Because he folds easily. <laughs> 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 Do you know why I never asked why he's Dexter? I know why you're Yums. Mm. He folds it. Do you mean give in? Yeah, so you're basically like, Mickey, you don't go for pints? No, come on ahead. I uh, <laughs> that is outstanding. I feel like it only works with pints though, with Mickey. Is it, uh, no, does it work with other things? things? Yeah. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anything except for like, things that are good for him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anything like, bad for him? Oh, he's gone. Like he's gone. Yeah. yeah. So he's actor. And <laughs> okay. then I was yum yums, but then I shortened it to yums. Yeah, but it works for the podcast. Did you? Uh, did you come up with Dexter? No, it was somebody in Australia actually called him Dexter because to his he, face when he was out gigging. Yeah, oh, because aye. they realised that it wasn't. It didn't take much to convince him to go out. Imagine they think we're all deck chairs back here. I would say we're probably yeah are. we're all when we're all got a bit pints, of a deck chair when it comes to paints we are <laughs> yeah. a fleet of deck chairs like <laughs> Sean does this thing every time we bump into somebody that we know and by the end of the conversation he goes we, let's definitely go for drinks soon and he hates them <laughs> Now, you, anyone who watches this... <laughs> has, Sean. Has Sean has ever said to you, let's go for a drink, <laughs> he <laughs> fucking <laughs> hates you. <laughs> Invited us for pains last week. <laughs> no, at the end of a... Com- we'll bump into somebody out and about or whatever, and sh- we haven't seen them in five years. And all you need to do... Sean just doesn't know how to... I don't know how to get out of it. I don't know how to end the conversation. You know, you could just be like, oh, great, listen, good to see you. See, like, all the best. Take like, care, bye-bye. Or- Goodbye. Yeah. Know, it's, a, it's a very easy end to Or do the Irish one. all, bye-bye, 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 bye-bye. Sean goes, bye-bye, 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 pints soon. Yeah. But you're like, you're going to the dentist after here, and you'll fully expect we're leaving you, or you'll be leaving us, and you'll be like, I'll be saying to you, you know, right, Connor, good luck getting your teeth fixed or whatever you're done, whatever you're getting done, but I'll be saying to you, like, we'll definitely go for drinks soon, I will. 100%. Couple of pints, we can hammer together, and you'll be leaving, like, walk it back to me. Is it that he doesn't know how to get into conversations, or he just needs friends to go for pints? It's a probably Yeah. Although I did try and organise the comedian's staff do when we met up last week for that BBC thing. Yes. Oh, so did we're, you? We're going to have to try Thanks. And I you're included, obviously, too. Like, we just, just hired a babysitter. I just don't remember being told about Is there a date planned? No, that's what we're trying to... We're trying to figure that out, yeah. Because Dave uh, was saying, like, a Tuesday afternoon, maybe. In Tuesday, December. I think, before, before the... I think we're talking about just before the stars and our eggs, because Mickey is heading to Australia for Christmas. Right, okay. So he okay. wanted to do it before he left, so we're trying to get that fitted it's, in. It's funny, too, that most people are like, we'll do day pints, because most of the comedians now have kids. Yeah. Like a lot of the comedians are just like married with kids and like, can we do the a- can we do an afternoon? <laughs> but then, and then last like, year was during the day, wasn't it? Last year, I think you said last year, I was last like, year was all made at six. And last like, year I, was all day and all night. They were chinned by the time I got down there. We like, uh, we started at half twelve. Unreal. This is the the famous fall that James McKegney did. Called, oh, yeah, broke yeah. his leg and yeah. I couldn't do the boxing. Two legs. Broke both legs. Broke 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 his ankle. Broke his ankle. Oh, I wouldn't yeah. broke both of them because he did, didn't have two casts. No, yeah. he did uh, something to the other yeah. one as well, but the main one was broke. Yeah, on what an app such shite storm. It was I great because I was on FaceTime to my wife at the time. Where you he caught it? I, and I was, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and then she went, Did that boy just fall? And I went, Aye, but I, and I looked down. I genuinely I was that drunk. I think, I think it's part of the show. Yeah, <laughs> and by the show, you mean him and Mickey and William with their tops off on the yeah. lavery yeah. stage. Uh, it's a random man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What else, what, what the, else would you do in the Christmas? Obviously. What do you call the thing where you just, you don't tell anyone you're going, you just head? It's something An Irish goodbye. goodbye. An Irish, Irish goodbye. goodbye. Yeah. I did that that night because we were all sitting in Lavery's and it was like, a, obviously it was a closed room and we were all just having yeah. pints. And I was just sitting there holding a drink and a few people were talking. Then Mickey's top came off, William's top came off, James McKegney's top came off. Mickey's trousers came off. Yeah. Mickey's trousers come off. <laughs> Sean was like, see, so we do pints on pints <laughs> 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 I do have a, a, a like. This is how bad I was. I, I do have a, 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 a photograph that Tim McGarry was there. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. yeah. but no memory, you have no recollection. No idea. I was like, it came to oversee fuck? things. I was like, yeah. where the fuck did Tim come? I was like, I don't even know he was there. I think I hugged him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I hugged him. I like fucking climbed up on a big chair and <laughs> put my arms around him. I used to do the Irish goodbye when I was a student, but I my friends called it the Houdini. So yeah. I used to like be out. Literally, I would be in the bar. Uh, in the club, and I'd be like, 
I am. I've actually reached the maximum amount of crack. I know I'm going to have the night. And yeah. I'd be like, this is me. There's no better time to leave than now. And it would always be like, do you want, I think it would be as soon as I would imagine myself eating a burger in bed. I'd be like, that's what you <laughs> should go do. And I would just, like, I would just literally be like, some out of a movie, I'd just go, I'd just put my drink down and just walk yeah. and just not, mm-hmm. and just keep going until there's a burger in my hand and I'm in bed. And my friends would be texting, I'd be like, I'm out in the smoking area, where are you? Since? I'm like, in the taxi, <laughs> yeah. in the way home. And I'd be in bed, my jam is going, Gears, this is so annoying, where is everybody? And all. And the, I used to just time and time again until eventually they would be like, we know you're in your bed with a burger. <laughs> <laughs> she calls man burgers by the way I was going to say I was going to say, I was gonna say yeah. a double decker no cheese uh, I, I was through channel blind I was, was, was going to go there but I thought no that's too no, much no that was channel blind that's, yeah, that's fine that's what we're singing but uh, as, as Americans call it an Irish goodbye you know because right? we, we have an Irish goodbye as in bye 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 yeah, that sort yeah. of thing but Americans called it an Irish goodbye we and, and where we grew up <laughs> we used to call it the Benny Hill right because we used to have this thing like men, older men that we were like teenagers, so older men in the park would leave on a Sunday to go and get the papers, and then not go back to like a Tuesday. Oh, <laughs> do you so know where my would, brain went there immediately when you say get the papers? Do you know? I immediately imagined they were way off having a secret wank. That's what I mean. <laughs> Why? Let's, like a, let's, like a dirty let's, man? let's retract that back. So, where's the papers? All reading the papers, that's all. <laughs> no, I went away. No. <laughs> <laughs> to get the papers, <laughs> not to read the papers. That's so, the excuse man. they gave at home was I'm waiting to get the papers at the shop, and then they would See, pass I'm the shop. I'm still here and having a wank. No. Right. But the wank came later on. Um, but the Benny Hill thing was because we would, we've caught, we caught on to it. So, every Sunday morning, we'd be standing, like a group of us, and we'd see somebody leave, and somebody go, because it was so fast to try and get away. So, that became known as the Benny Hill. So you'd escape then. So anytime anybody left uh, yeah. a, a party early or a pub or whatever, you'd say, oh, I did the Benny Hill last night. Is <laughs> and there, everybody knew what it meant. <laughs> is there a better piece of music than that? Because no, it's sadly. like, as soon as it comes on, it. it describes what's happening, yeah. isn't it? It's like Tits. somebody. <laughs> 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 and so if you're watching you pornos that have copyright music and they've had to throw it over the top. <laughs> think about Benny Hill now in this day, like. A 60, 65 year old man chasing Aye. around women in bikinis. Yeah. Like, just it would like here. It's iconic though, isn't it? Well, it was. I love the, the great escape music. Oh, Aye. That was another one that used to happen. <laughs> yeah. Another between thing, that she, between that and Benny Hill. She whistles on an intake. Did oh, you know I? that? <whistles> That's how she whistles. I do, bo- I do both as well, yeah. Do you? you can do both. So it's continuous? Yeah. You're, he's, like, he's a bi breather. I'm a bi breather. I'm an inways, and what do you, you, you do it out? You're an outie. I'm a straight breather. <laughs> Why do roll our belly buttons just to, oh no, <laughs> just to match them up? Mine's just a dark cave. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen men in a long time. The marble arches. Mine's is actually, do you know what's funny? Mine isn't an but it's in. That's an in, isn't it? No, I have oh, an Audi belly button, you, but it's in. Oh, you've got the wee button? I've got a button, yeah. but it's inside the circle. But it's encased. Yes. Yeah, it's not if on a sideboards. Just in case you hit it by accident, you know, <laughs> had to put away. Yes, <laughs> it's a head freaking case of emergency. <laughs> when you hit it, you hear. Sean coming upstairs. <laughs> That's the maiden call. That's the maiden call. Come on. <laughs> so what's an Irish kiss? Is that a headbutt? It's a drink. Oh no. No, Glasgow kiss Sorry. was always a headbutt. Was a Belfast right? handshake is a headbutt. A oh, Belfast I never heard that. Belfast handshake? Yes, because I had it in my last show. Right. I knew, Just so I, I, knew, knew I knew about a Glasgow kiss, but I never knew about a... Glasgow kiss is a, a yeah, hip hop. Yeah. And a Belfast handshake is a hip hop. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That way you grab by the hand, just sink the head, don't you? Yeah, it's exactly it. And you've seen people do that, haven't you? Uh, um, I mean, I haven't. I, <laughs> do you know what I said? I've never done I didn't that. grow up in Belfast. <laughs> every time. But when I, do you know what I remember when I moved to Belfast when I was 18 and my like parents being like, be careful down there. It's really dangerous. Like, there's like, don't let anyone hear your second name. They'll assume you're a Catholic and don't be like, just don't go to certain areas and I'll see her. And I moved to Belfast you're and from I was Barry. like, exactly. <laughs> I moved to Belfast and it's all here. Down here's a breeze. <laughs> <laughs> like, down here's easy. Do you know what I mean? I used to ring taxis going, taxi for McHegney? Mc- and I'd just be like making names up. McDoherty. I know, McDoherty. Yeah, for McDoherty. <laughs> that's still massively taggy. Then didn't help you always wear a Celtic shirt, too. No, that's no, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> the giveaway. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you're, this is a Meet the Parents podcast. We like to talk about all things parenting. And you have two daughters, don't you? Yes, two yeah. daughters, yeah. One's uh, 19 and one's um, 
13 coming in January. That took a while for you to <laughs> figure that I, age yeah. out. Yeah. So, uh, well, it's because there's no uh, <laughs> with Ruby, he's the youngest one, he's got special needs. Yeah. So you try to remember the age because she doesn't associate yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I mean? She so maybe doesn't seem like a 13 year old. Oh, she's not, no. She's like a, a two and a half, three year old, you know, in the sense of brain capacity. Really that young? Yeah. So when you say Ruby, Ruby's turning 13, did you say? Yeah. So when you say Ruby has special needs, like, do well, you, yeah. is, it, is it like a, is there a specific, like, special um, needs? She's got a load of conditions. She's got, like, a, She's got like a a, a cocktail. Um, there's no one condition that she fits into. Right. Um, so she's got about seven or eight different conditions that she's elements of, and uh, that's our biggest problem is that nobody can figure out. So it's where hard to figure out in. like a, a plan of action if you're not too plan sure. Of fact, we don't know what. So is it's one of those here. things that when you do find out the actual name of it, then you know how to treat it. But because you well, we've we've yeah, relative. we've got a couple of ones I've never heard of before. Obviously, there's there's obvious ones like the autism spectrum, ASD, and then you've ADHD. Um, and OCD, and she has Tourette's, but there's other ones like uh, ODD and PDA, and um, kissing people in public. <laughs> yeah, the Irish uh, kiss. The Irish kiss. <laughs> she does do. Uh, she's quite good at headbutting people. Um, what What does that mean? So PDA is pathological demand avoidance. Right, so okay. you probably would have that if the owners asked you to do stuff, you just pathologically avoid it. Yeah, yeah, um, a- absolutely. Yeah. We had that discussion on the way down here. No way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sean's got PDA, yeah. but uh, it actually means not just the demands put upon them from other people, but also the there's, societal. Uh, no, her body. Oh. So okay. like the demands her body has on her to go to the toilet or to go to things she'll avoid at, at all costs and all that sort of stuff. So it's very. I was going to say interesting. It's not fucking interesting when you're dealing and with it. But and they're not cognitive there. decisions either. They're not. That's not Ruby going. I'm not doing that. No. That's her body. That's her, just her. That's her, the, her it's her, involuntary. She can't, it's just can't just compute. Can't, yeah, just won't won't do. So she's not toilet trained. She can't dress herself, and um, she eats like a fucking. She eats her hands, and all, you mm. know, she's very toddler like, but she's thirteen. But that's to say because she's so obviously Ruby's very toddler like, but she's the size of a twelve turning thirteen. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh so she's, that's a, she's a big unit like her mother, and um, so that's obviously like <laughs> <laughs> cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna absolutely let that one slide. <laughs> I did. I do that on stage, and I did it the last time, and I forgot she was there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're right. I know you done it. <laughs> she never knew I did it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's sitting in the back, and as soon as I said it, I was like, I was in Port Rush, and I went. You said a glass smash? No, I actually, actually said to the audience, I was like, I'm just realizing she's sitting down the back of the <laughs> In the belly, belly yeah, health yeah, team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ready to bust me. But yeah, so she's, Ruby would kind of be like a, yeah, a giant toddler in that sense. So, uh, but she's filled with anxiety and rage and aggression and, and love and char- all the fucking Everything's everything, extreme. Everything, everything's extreme, yeah. There's no, uh, and she doesn't shut up. She's constantly talking, but there's no sense. Yeah. So I mean, that she is talks like from the second she wakes up. From she opens her eyes to she closes them. Like, yeah, she just, and it's it's usually anxiety based questions like, when's mommy coming home? When's, yeah. you know, or, and if, it's, if she's there, it's something else. When's, mm. kind of you said to me last week too, if she sees like a cat or a dog outside, cat she and goes, dogs are, she yeah, loses it. Serious. Like, I mean, I actually feel so sorry for her, you know, when she sees, because her whole she's body so just afraid. goes into like a, like a shake and her heart just pounds and she squeals and then batters us. <laughs> the yeah. only way she can deal with it, you know, but, so we can't go for walks, we can't go out because dogs, it's not until you have to look for dogs and cats, you realise mm. how many people have them. Oh, they're everywhere, I know, yeah. And cats especially, who just do their own thing. They yeah. roam, yeah. They just roam. At least and the dogs they, on a lead. Dogs on a lead normally. People who keep dogs on a fucking lead. Mm, um, yeah. But the cat just appears. You know, you could be sitting in the garden on a cat and then that's it for two hours, you're trying to keep her so and the cat didn't do anything. The cat just walked past. Like it's yeah. just I know. And so you're you say you're not able to take Ruby outside anymore. No. So when did that stop? About seven years ago, six seven years ago. And what was the like catalyst for that? Like what were you like? This I physically lost, is impossible now. I nearly lost her to traffic. Oh, so wow. uh, a couple were coming along, pushing a bit. The other thing is small babies. Small babies and small children. She she doesn't like them. And she wants to hit them, mm-hmm. and she can't control it. Yeah. So we is have she, to. Is it from a place of fear? She uh, afraid. There's a f- uh, we've we've said we think it's the unpredictability. Yeah, that yeah. But she yeah. can't predict what an animal's going to do. She can't predict what a baby's going to do. Yeah. And then the baby makes noise that she can't understand. Mm. So the crying then sets her really bad. Um, and then fucking YouTube caught on. I don't know how uh, algorithms really fascinate me. Same. Like we would sh- any time a, a, a video would come up on YouTube that is a baby crying, she would lose fucking lose your head uh. so we would block that video and then more and more would start appearing 
I don't you know. Expect the opposite. Opposite. You would expect the opposite. You would expect the yeah. opposite. Yeah. So they were getting more, and then someone, so someone sabotage, and you can't. I'm, I'm one of the few house. people in the world who pay for YouTube Premium. Oh yeah, yeah we so do. do we. It's yeah. the best thing. It's the best. Thing had to had to because yeah, we yeah. had to cut out those ads that yeah. were showing. You know, oh, yeah. and sometimes wow. the kids don't even have to be crying; they just have to be babies. Is and this she there? Was, yeah. So um, there was those things that we can't really control, you know, and it comes from that unpredictability of. Sudden movement, mm. you know, a dog or a cat can move, and she just can't figure it out. So when you say you nearly lost her in the traffic, yeah. So a couple come along, and um, and like when you're when, even when we at that stage we knew about the phobias, but we were also very conscious of seeing ahead, you know, looking ahead, and if you seen a, a dog coming, we'd cross the road and all that sort of stuff. But this couple just came over brow the hill. and the fella was pushing the, the buggy, and the one was standing aside, and I didn't see she had a dog in a lead, with a wee tiny wee dog, and we kept walking towards it. The next thing was too late, and Ruby ran out in the road to get away from the dog and I only the car swerved and I got her by the neck she was like she'd been flattened like. so you're, she's like five six years old she was five or six yeah so like I came home and I burst into tears like, oh, it was I'm just sure. a fear I was like I'd never seen anything no I've never felt anything they got so yeah. close to try and get and she doesn't you know, she doesn't and that parental yeah. instinct as well oh, of just yeah. like no. Just like animalistic to just save your child from yeah, fucking absolutely. oncoming traffic. Yeah. And then the, the, the rest of the journey home was only about 100 yards, 150 yards. It was a fucking nightmare time. Because uh, then you had to deal with her being so upset. upset, And your fucking adrenaline's pumping on you because you just yeah. literally foreseen like, the child being flattened on the road. And you're like, fucking hell, this is crazy. So then you just, yeah. So we're, we're kind of confined to either driving or in the front garden. So you went home and did you just have that conversation then where you're like, we, we can't take her out anymore? Yeah. It's just we just it's, was that the final straw? It's too much, yeah. It's too much of a risk for her own safety, you know, more than yeah, anything else. Yeah. Before um, that, we kind of it was an it was an annoyance to us, yeah. But we're like, okay, we'll have to get past it's it. Safety. But now it's like she genuinely. We didn't think she would go that far. She just doesn't have the 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 comprehension to know that that car is dangerous and that car is going to. But no, no toddlers no do. No toddler do. You know, no. or, or none of them do. But you know, obviously, when you get to twelve or thirteen, and then people think, yeah. She's gonna know, yeah. You know, but no, no. it's the same thing. Like, um, one of our nieces was always much taller than the other kids in her mm-hmm. class, and I remember always thinking, people are going to expect much more of her. She's only seven, but she looks ten because she's quite tall, yeah. and it's unfair because people are going to expect more her to like know how to do more things and also maybe have more of a sensibility about her, yeah. like a ten year old would. Mm-hmm. When it's like oh, that's that's a hindrance. Do you mean? And, and the other thing is too is. We have a problem as parents of forgetting that kids need to know everything from us. Yeah. So recently I was at a friend's house and there was another couple there with their kids and they were visiting. I Obviously I didn't have Ruby with me, but I was there and one of the kids came out to their mum. You know, well, no, the child's real shy and doesn't want to say nothing to the mum. You know, she came up and said, look, said the man says, mummy, can you help me? Um, the soap's broke. So she went to the toilet, the soap wasn't working. And the mother was like, right. She went into the bathroom. It was a bar of soap. Oh. The child had never known a what to do with a bar of soap. She said everything was pump action. She had yeah. never, so to her, the soap's broke. I don't know what to do with it. God love and her. Like, That's basic life skills that are just gone now. Because yeah. Definitely all they've ever right seen. There, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Kids being handed a bar of soap, go and wash your hands. And they're all like, whoa. What are you oh, doing? was there? Uh, uh, yeah, there must be yeah. something, yeah. But I've yeah. seen before too. Do you know like a video of... So I've seen kids like on... It was like the tube or the train or whatever, and they're sat with a, a, a hand in a book, and they're going. <laughs> they don't know how to use it. And like the, mm. the the book's not doing anything, and they're all, "What yeah. the hell?" Because they're yeah. just so used to screens or iPads. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or there's the video of like kids being handed like a a a, a phone, that, no, a phone that like dials. They got there, right, and yeah. they're just like, and they don't know what the receiver part is. They're all <laughs> yeah. like, like they haven't. Well, they're probably not holding it in the it's sky. Like, there was somebody said recently. I don't know where it was. I've seen it, but like this here is gone. Yeah. Yeah, because that they don't know what that means. They yeah, there's no the thing. Yeah. It's all just it's not like a flipper. It's, that. it's just you know, it's, mm. yeah, it's weird. But uh, yeah, there's some things that you you forget that you have to teach. Yeah, because you I don't know you just sort of think they're gonna know. Yeah, and but they, then they don't. They know nothing. No. They're brand new. They're a blank canvas. That's it. Yeah. So then, obviously, like with ha- with having a a child who has so like you, it's that's obviously such a strain on your own like day to day life. I'm sure you know you you work and you do comedy and you do a podcast and you do so many things. And obviously, it's just you're, to get out of the house, you just to get out of the house. <laughs> but you're a dad as well. But then when you go home, I'm sure it's just full on every second that you're there. Yeah, um, like I go to work for a break. Mm. Oh, don't so we all? Our, yeah, our, our main job is at home. The thing is. 
user at that early stage um, mm-hmm. of the children being younger and whilst it's so stressful and so thing you're, you're, it passes you're going to lose them mm-hmm. you know six or seven eight you know they're going to just start like I don't and then you get to 12 or 13 they don't give a fuck about you and they yeah, want to yeah. see you so the, like uh, you, uh, embrace that while you have it but our thing is it's been going on now Ruby's coming 13 so she was statement at five but we knew when she was about three mm-hmm. so we've had about 10 years now so we've 10 years of nappies 10 years of mm, changing yeah. and dressing and, and then you get into the personal hygiene and, and showering and all that sort of stuff and that's because her body doesn't know she's a fucking three yeah, year old yeah, yeah, yeah. you know the body's still growing and developing so so what were the first three years like then was it just first three years of normal just what you would expect the problem for us was we had a child either side in the family so an aunt had a child about three months before and my brother had a child about six, four, six months afterwards. So there's constant comparison. Constant comparison. And then the problem is, and that's for any parent out there, every child develops differently. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you, they weren't, we weren't allowed to judge the other two against her. Yeah. But there were certain things that are basic development that were happening with them that wasn't happening with her. Mm. Um, just even simple things like crawling and stuff like that. You know, she wasn't figuring it out. And then she fell she fell one time off, just off one step, and into the corner of the um, the wall, oh. and it split her head down here. To the, you see, you can see the skull. Oh Jesus! So, like we photograph, where you can see just a white skull. That's how deep it was. Like. And she went. We had to take her to the hospital to get stitches. I was in Edinburgh actually at the time with mm. you. Uh, oh really? The, uh, 2014, maybe it was. Okay. Uh, or 13 or 14, and so I had to ring back and find out. So when they took her to the hospital. They gave her stitches and she never flinched. And the doctor was like, "That's is that the pain threshold?" So they were like, "That's not really normal. Like she mm. should really be reacting. squirming and screaming." So this yeah. is her one. So at that stage, we thought, "Oh, something's a wee bit different." You know what I mean? But we st- again, you still weren't allowed, and that's the problem. Then you don't get a, a statement until she's five. Mm. Right. So from three to five, she, we were doing what you normally like because we already had a child. We, yeah. we went through that process of you know school and preschool. And yeah, all that so at that but stage, if you already have a child, you're sort of even yourself able to compare what you know yeah. you're going to. Our issue was we left too big of a gap there was between a se- your two there kids. Was a seven year gap, mm. and so uh, apart, uh, even if Ruby didn't have additional needs, there's no comparison between the two. There's mm. no. Whereas if you have somebody within two three years of each other. They will occupy themselves. They'll sort of, you know, as, as time goes on, oh, you'll but you're, find. So you're saying like they couldn't hang around each other because no, there was too much of an too age much gap. Of an age gap. There was I... no play, and there was no interest. There was no common yeah. thing. There was no toys to fight over. There do you know what you need to do? Problem. Have them close together or really far apart, where there's like a teenager and a baby, because they'll maybe like. Well, then you to play well, with no, the baby. well, I would go to the teenager because then you have a babysitter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you think? Yeah. Well, actually, I was going to say, yeah, you think that, but no, she's 19 now and she still doesn't fucking babysit. Yeah. Do you think it was it genetics or was there, is there any kind there, of We, we went through genetics and um, so there is a defective chromosome, um, uh, uh, but they, they, they don't know what. Yeah. Uh, what to do with it you know they just mm. they brought us up to the royal and went through the whole genetics thing and then they went yeah we found something and I was like oh great yeah and they're like no that's it we just we just find something uh, uh, that's the <laughs> end of that no, conversation there was no answers there was but no answers but it's, it's mad because I'm sure I can, I can not use the word blame because that's quite severe but I mean you do start to be like is it me is it you like what and you start to like question about like it's the thing as we done as well because even with fertility like the amount of people that we've spoken to going like through like fertility journeys too and the big thing between the two the couple is that there are they, they fall out a lot about who's felt something is and yeah. like you know like who who's the blame for and then it comes back a lot of time undiagnosed infertility and then yeah. it's like that case where you're like well there's nobody to yeah, blame and also you don't want to use the word blame because it's your child is that what I mean but you know, you know what yeah, I mean well, like, that, that, absolutely yeah, there's no, no blame in that sense but yeah. we know which side it's on um, but Her it's, side. Uh, <laughs> but, there's no, <laughs> but there's no you know that, that, as you say it's not a blame yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. and to be honest Pause with you, I, just, I yeah. probably wouldn't have wanted to know yeah and the only reason I wanted to get the genetic test because I thought something was going to be done with it yeah so find that out didn't do us any benefit. You yeah, know, it didn't cause any issue or any problem. Like, but um, what are the things that your daughter does that bring you joy? Like, what are the things like she does, and you like that's like what are your favorite things about her? Do you know what I mean? Like my favorite thing mm-hmm. about Winter is that she um, at the minute she sings constantly. She just loves singing, but also she talks constantly like your daughter does too. She yeah. just talks all day long, and you're like some days it'll grind you down, and other days you're like. I love that wee squeaky voice of hers. No, nah, I don't get that. Um, because again, when 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 the older child was younger, that that develops, mm-hmm. the conversation develops, the questions she asks you, 
are sort of learned then. They they, yeah. they, they, they sort of understand it. There's nothing more really like, you know, you're 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 just you may as well talk to that wall. It's you know, just it doesn't, really doesn't noise, set in. It's just repetitive and constantly asking and constantly just over and over and over the same thing. The thing I love, like sometimes she she can be so charming. Mm-hmm. You know, she's got that in a scale and she'll have people in the palm of her hand, you know, yeah. it, but until she doesn't get her way. Yeah. And then it's fucking hell hell breaks. Which is loose. hard because you can't always give a child their you own way because it, no. it's th- they want things that are yeah. bad for them well, or absolutely. Not right I mean, or she, or yeah. doesn't help their development. Yeah. And and especially like with Ruby, she's such a sensory based. Like she'll go and put her hand in the hot iron and constantly do it. Mm. Because even though she knows it's gonna hurt her. Yeah. She likes the feeling of it happening. Right. The afterwards of the pain, then is what we have to deal with. Right. So we learned that a number of years ago, so the iron's <laughs> completely away. Oh, but she can't she can't stop herself from touching it. It's a p- compulsion. A real compulsion. She can't that's the O C D thing, she has to touch it or mm. um she has this it's almost like a tick. I don't know if it's Tourette's or I don't know if it's O C D where she has to throw some. Mm-hmm. So whether it's like we've got our wee shitty phone just for her to watch YouTube on or something and she'll throw that or TV remote or a cup or whatever. She has to throw it at you and it comes out of nowhere. You Aye. know, she could be as happy as I next thing you get a fucking mug in the side of the head. Holy shit. Um, and there's no there's no rhyme or reason to it. And that's why we that's the frustration comes from us where we can't find a fucking solution. We can't What about you know, respite? We used to get it quite often, but we don't get it now um as often. We, Does Ruby go to school? She goes to the special needs school in Oma, yeah. Um we, respite, we used to get it. It was fuck. We used to love it, but then over COVID, something changed with the uh, center, and it's now not available and all yeah. that sort of shit. So um, we get it in Derry. Actually, she has to go to Derry um, for usually it's forty eight hours. That's so all we sort of get. Yeah. But it's enough to get a recharge of the batteries and just. You what know. do you do in that time? Do you just <laughs> fucking do you collapse? Get hammered? Do you no, sleep? Do you, you ring Mickey Bird and you're all paint? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, no fucking jammies on and do yeah. not. Yeah. yeah. Just to be able to do simple just basic. Just to be able to sit and have a cup of tea. Mm. Aye. Without, Without worrying about safety as yeah. well. Yeah. 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 The constant yeah. the constant worry. Well, she safety. she if you had a cup of tea now she'd want to do that. She don't yeah. want to shove that to see because she needs to get a reaction from me. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we can't get that out of her. We can't get that. No. And we we're dealing with behavioural specialists and we're dealing with all the, you know. Yeah. But they can't figure it out either, you know. Mm. And how has it affected you and your wife's like relationship with each other? Well, it means then we don't we don't have time to focus on shit. You know, <laughs> That's good. To be we don't have time to fall out about stupid fucking yeah. stuff mm. because our whole mind's completely occupied with other stuff. Um, but then does the things build up then? Do you know what I mean? Is it um, not really? We kind of no, we're kind of good in that sense, you know. Um, and it, one of the hardest things for us, I suppose, then is the is the caring and all the things because it's like uh, being married to a hairdresser is a yeah. fucking nightmare. <laughs> you know, I haven't had a Saturday and. 19 years. Yeah, she's always <laughs> asking you about your holidays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have a fucking holiday. <laughs> Do you, well, imagine, Look around you. <laughs> imagine being the hairdresser who never gets a holiday because I of this. Know. And every single person I'm away this week. So then I have to hear, oh, fuckers away again this week. <laughs> um, but no, she does get away. You know, I, I'm, I'm not a, a holiday person. So I would say to her, like, you know, her and her sister will go away for three, four days. But that's about as maximum as you can leave yeah. somebody with Ruby. Because it's, it's, a it's, a, it's a lot of pressure. Oh, it's constant. Like, yeah. your wife, she does your hair, doesn't she? Yeah. Yeah, because you've always got great hair. Mm. I was saying to Sean last week, I was, like, I've been waiting for, like, anybody that's married to a hairdresser or is going out with a hairdresser will know you have to wait until they're ready for an appointment. You know what I mean? Oh, You're really? not, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no such thing as booking appointments. It's just like, can they get my hair? No, that's today. <laughs> <laughs> and then last week we were doing the BBC recording. <laughs> yeah. And an email came out to say there will be hair and makeup at the event. Oh, was her nose out of joint? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh my God. So the night before, I was like, oh, don't worry about the hair. I said, there's hair and makeup. Who's doing it? And I was like, I, <laughs> yes. I, I don't know. There's hair and makeup. She goes, no, I'll do it now. I'll do it now. And she went, I was like, fucking 12 years I've been doing this. Of all I had to say was, there's somebody else doing hair and makeup at this tonight. She'll absolutely get it done. I think, she would, I think she'd be happier if I rid somebody else. <laughs> I'm going to get my hair cut by somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, honestly, I, I would be happier if Sean read somebody else than if somebody else made him laugh. <laughs> if I saw him looking at his phone laughing, I'd be like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> who's he? <Yeah. laughs> because, but it's like, that's like the female equivalent of like a, do you know, like a, a man in the house and like there's, the, you know, the fucking toilet needs fixed for ages. And you're like, do you want to just rang a plumber? And they're like, span her out. I'll fucking fix no, the toilet. No. I'd be like, do you want tea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, what time's that plumber getting here? <laughs> I am the. W- I have no DIY at all. No. I put up a picture about 13 years ago. 
and it was so crooked. She's never asked me to do anything since. That's like that's what kids do. They Self-sabotage sabotage themselves. No, no, no. I thought it was straight. Oh, really? right. That's how bad I am. <laughs> and then she was like, you can't see that. I was like, no. And every person that came in went, that's crooked. I was like, it's fucking not crooked. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. I have it's no It's not eye. crooked. I have no way no for any of that stuff <laughs> I mean, like at all. spirit level? I have, yeah. And I used a spirit <laughs> level. <laughs> Like the spirit level to God. But I got the measurements wrong, so the picture was a wee bit higher than the one next to it, and not like in a cool way. Whenever I was pregnant with Winter, I was um, there's things you know, like you have like uh, what's the word? Things that make you sick when you're pregnant. You know what I mean? And people might be like the smell of coffee or yeah. a smell of a certain perfume or their washing powder. My washing powder actually made me feel sick too. But one of mine, aversions. One of my pregnancy aversions was seeing anything DIY related. Like, if I seen a renovation on Instagram of somebody's mm-hmm. bathroom, I'd be like, Ugh. I had to unfollow every <laughs> single before and after account <laughs> on Instagram because it was triggering. I, if but I, that's, I, there's yeah. something in that. There's a nesting thing in there. Possibly. There's a nesting thing there, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Because, like, I learned that with the f- when, the, when uh, the first child was being born in, what was that, 2004? There's definitely an instinctual thing of, for a woman that's yeah. getting prepared for the nest to be ready. But there is. It's a There's hormonal thing, yeah. nesting. I yeah. come home one day and she was two days overdue. Mm. And she was glossing the skirting boards. Yeah. Right? I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. She goes, well, look at the shape. I was like, no, but you're about to, dr-, you know. Yeah. And But the thing is, you can't stop no. that from happening. And the, like that's instinctual and that's her instinct. And that's, you know, she's able to uh, act on her instinct. Yeah. If I act my instincts <laughs> and ride the next door neighbour. <laughs> <laughs> You're the bad guy. Apparently I'm the fucking criminal. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? The day I was and due. he was happy too. <laughs> <laughs> the day I was due with one try, so I painted our fence. And I don't know why that would be nesting. Like I'm expecting the wee lad to go out and camp. I know, we girl, it's, it was wonder. It's, it's not. It's but with the DIY thing, if, like, honestly, if, if anybody, if there was a drill out in our house, and I think I would just be like, Ugh. and like, we, I think as well, we were buying a house. So we were trying to buy a house at the time during our, my first pregnancy, and we were going to look at it. <laughs> Sean and I are obviously like, Sean, not wired, right? Because we went home from like, we're, we're going to buy this house, and we could we sleep, Sean? We sat up all uh, We had every night. room decorated we're, on we, a page and all. We, we were pa- doing drawings and Do you remember whenever you were like a, links on Amazon? You, you see, that's, these are well matched there. <laughs> Do you remember when you were like 10 or 11 you'd rearrange your bedroom and you'd draw, draw it out in a page and you'd have like a wee circle for your bedside table and you'd draw out your bed and all? No? No. Oh, I said, I thought it. Did you do that? We didn't have room in our... Yeah. Room. We didn't have paper. <laughs> we didn't have paper either, no. But, um, yeah, we used to draw everything out. This is exactly where it's all going to go in the room and then I'd hold it up and I'd be like, let's go. And then I'd move everything. My That's drawing was like, where am I going to put my brother? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the top bunk, but where am I going to put him in the yeah, room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a box. <laughs> and we sat all night long like, draw, decorating every room, choosing paint colours, choosing new furniture and all. And I was pregnant. And then I remember it got so bad that I was like, we need to not buy a house. <laughs> I can't mm-hmm. paint it. I feel so sick. But even caravans too. We bought a, an old shitty caravan and renovated it. Mm-hmm. And you couldn't stay in it because you were We sick. did sell it after I had winter because I was, oh, I'm not going back in that caravan. That gives me the book. That's nothing to do with That's just because she's posh. Oh, I'm posh now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. From London. London. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Um, so but there is, but that is, there's definitely a, 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 a psychological thing there. There's definitely has a feeling that comes over. Yeah, uh, a woman who's in that uh, last period of like the the, the, yeah. the trimester or the third trimester, or whatever. When all and of a sudden you're like, we don't have anything. We don't in. Have, yes, and all that sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah, and I think then the gap, like I said, of seven years yeah. to the next one mm. was a fucking nightmare because we had done all the uh, uh, nappies and all that sort of stuff, and then you're back with nappies. Yeah. Now I didn't know that I was going to be still at nappies mm. twelve yeah, years yeah. later, <laughs> um, but at that stage it was still alien. It was almost like, how did we do this? Because yeah. we were forget we were twenty two, twenty three when we had uh, Mia, and we're like, how did we? Did we, we, we how did we do this? <laughs> we do, you know, what do you do? You get through it. But you just... Do you know what you're talking about that there? Like, oh, done with nappies and then bang, back in nappies. Hmm. Five times. Yeah, I don't know how. I don't know. I don't know. But even like... With but us you, Sean's you, still wearing nappies. You, you keep <laughs> getting out of them and keep having to... <laughs> but between us having winter and Rocky, there's like a two year difference. Even but, then, you forget everything. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's everything. what I'm saying. But uh, and like seven like, years is like, oh my pretend. God. Yeah. I don't... You don't forget. She forgets oh, fucking nothing. Yeah. I remember it all. No, you do. Obviously, you do forget. But I do lots of research. On everything. Right. <laughs> very bo- everything. A very boring person to be around. I'm like, shh, I'm researching sleep. Well, it's not sleeping. Excellent. Which is <laughs> not fun. Uh, what does the future hold for your family? 
<laughs> I know that's a bit of a well, there question. That's but a problem, yeah. Because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, 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 f- a long time fear, a term fear for us. Mm. You know, Ruby's never going to leave us. You mm-hmm. know, we, we, um, she'll be there with us till, you know, till the end. Because she's never going to be able to leave and go on and do her own thing. The older girl, obviously, we're, we're, you know, she's nineteen now. She's at university down in, in McGee, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, hopefully there's grandkids via me at yeah. some point. Mm-hmm. Hopefully not now. Fucking watch though. Um, but uh, here, but you've sent her to Derry. I know, I know, but we're not letting her stay there. So <laughs> she has here, to travel home every day. Here, I, I, I can confirm it can happen during the day. <laughs> <laughs> so can I? That's for thinking about it. But <laughs> yeah, burgers and dairy too. Maybe burgers and dairy too. Burger vans. You can do so, it on the van. <laughs> so future proofing for us is yeah. We we have no idea. We we when when Ruby was about five or six, we thought, you know, when she gets to ten. Will it be proportional? Will, will her her development will be slow, but she might be uh, primary one level when she's ten. Mm. You know, but it's not. It hasn't. So she will be this two to three year old we in her brain. That's what we don't know. So she's right. no like um, even she can't call her in. She can't write. She can't do any of that sort of stuff. She can't yeah. do any basic life skills that you would need. Is there something that can be made within your house, like a room, like a safe room, or something? Can something be done that can help her, but also help you have a better respite during we the day? Can, we can do as much as we can inside. The problem is you can't deal you with can't the external. Yeah. So things that are out of our control, boy racers with loud cars come past, mm. scares the fucking life out of her and just sets her mad. We can't control that. Mm. Cats, as I said, Dogs, just yeah. appearing out of nowhere. We can't control that. What was that. Halloween like then? Fireworks? Mm. Hello, and, and another thing that we, we learned this year was the worst year of it was thunder. Aye. Oh. Just like a wee dog, she has no idea where it's coming from. She doesn't know where the oh, noise is coming from, and she can't sun. cope. So then we fucking we lost the TV because of it. What um, comforts her in those sort of circumstances? Or does she have to just write it out? She has to write it out. Yeah, there's no keeping her, you know, calm. You have to try and distract yeah. at all times. So that, I, I genuinely think distraction is ninety five percent of parenting. Absolutely, oh yeah, yeah. you distract away, yeah. 100%. isn't it? And yeah. there's a thing with Ruby in her school; they would call it a, a new face. Yeah. So bringing a new face in, a new person to distract away from that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and it works a lot. She, she's the biggest trigger she has is people. Mm-hmm. She fucking loves people. She wants to talk to them all night. When I say talk, yeah, <laughs> it's, there's no talk in there. Yeah. Pure gibberish. And she stops people all the time going past, and they come over. And now most of the neighbours around us have sort of figured out, you know, hi Ruben, mm-hmm. and they walk on. But in the early days, they were like, oh, because she yeah. looks like, you know, she's twelve. She, she, she looks and you. she goes, come here, and she calls them over. Do you know what? You and should- then next thing is just. Do you yeah. know what you should do? Fear with Ruby, just for you. And like she's talking to somebody and they're looking at in, and then you should look at them as if how do you not understand what she's saying? Yeah. I, <laughs> I do a bit of an anesthesia, actually, but I, I, do, do, I do have a bit of fun sometimes with it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially with somebody I don't like. Yeah. You're like, she's just, she's just said, yeah. like, how's the weather? Is today? your hearing like, okay? I mean, I don't know, I, I don't know what. I <laughs> think you've had a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, let's ring an ambulance. <laughs> Our daughter's going through a phase at the minute where she, she doesn't know how to say, I don't want to be around this person anymore or whatever. She goes, I don't like them. Uh-huh. And I was talking to a young couple the other night and she literally came over to me and she goes, can we go now? I don't like them too. In front of them? In front of them. Did she? Mm. And you're like, uh, uh, what, what do you do? Like, yeah, what do you say? I'm like, I am so sorry that she hates you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I can see your point. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe uh, try, be nicer. Ruby has this thing where she gets the, the, the her words mixed. She goes, says the opposite sort of. Yeah. So she'll stop somebody and she'll go, Daddy hit me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. But uh, what she's telling them is she hit Daddy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I have to explain that to people. Is that what you've been telling social and services? Then, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And then she goes, well, I don't know where the black eye came out of, but that's... <laughs> <laughs> But she does all daddy hit me and I'm like, I know she means that she hit daddy. Oh, that's so awful for you because mm. you always are constantly, I'm sure, constantly. worried that people are going, did daddy hit? And then Do you know what? They don't give a fuck. No, because no. here's the other thing too, and me and my wife talked about this going, I don't know what it is you would have. Nobody, you know the way people always say, oh, social services are going to get involved? Yeah. They won't. They won't. No. I mean, you have to be into levels of abuse. Mm-hmm. before you actually get an intervention. And even then, they yeah. mightn't do anything. There's nobody could take Ruby. Mm. We've, we've tried selling her. There's no, there's no, <laughs> there's no market for her. But um, there's nobody, you know, because the challenging behaviours, even the staff who are trained yeah. can't deal with her. Oh, really? Yeah, so the trust staff come in and we, you know, we've had some serious nightmares. Like. Do you mean and they're usually like young girls coming in who are um, have just started in their post or something. And they're, they're, what do they call them? Family support workers and yeah. all that sort of stuff. And no, 
Ruby really just fucking tears him apart. Like. She can smell weakness at fucking yeah. mile. Like. Is your shame about social services there? And this is quite grim, but like I once saw a family and uh, the da was being verbally abusive to his children in public, like really, really abusive towards mm. him. And I followed oh, yeah. them and like went after him you and confronted him. Confronted him. There was like it was like there was like five or six of them and a couple of kids and I confronted him. I my blood was boiling because mm. I was just like, you can't speak to it. Like he was he was like I mean, giving the kids dogs abuse, right? Really loudly mm-hmm. in a car park. And I went after them and I was like, and he turned to me and he started giving me abuse and his wife very much like, just like stood by. And I turned to his wife and was all, you don't have to deal with this shit. That's all, this is not something you, and like I really got involved and I probably shouldn't have, but also it's like your instinct is like, what the hell is going on yeah. when I'm not here? And I was looking at the kids and the kids were just all like, everyone was ignoring me except for him and he was like in my face. And as I went to walk away, then he went... Um, I it was all I go and walk back to your car, or you're gonna, re- or I'll make you regret coming near me. Or he threatened me in some uh-huh. sort of way. And I went away, got his car registration, rang social services, and they were all to me. Can't do anything about that yeah. because we can't find out who that is from the car registration because that's going to police records, and we're not able to actually do that. And I was like, but there's a genuine concern being res- raised here for the safety. Nope. No. Isn't that wild? They don't have the resources. They don't have the yeah. And, then that and that's a sign the of the health system in general. I mean, it's just not. Have they done anything for you, or are they able to help in any um, shape or form? They, 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 they are. Like I have to say, they do try. They yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. try. Ruby is just uh, unfortunately Ruby is such a special case that Ruby's special needs are so fucking special. Yeah. <laughs> she couldn't have just got normal special needs. Yeah. <laughs> get, like, on on uh, undiagnosable ones. Um, so th- that can be a difficulty. They, they they provide us the, um, with uh, a thing called direct payments, mm-hmm. which is where they will. Give you have to separate, separate bank account and all that sort of stuff. They give you money to so hire somebody. a carer, so you employ a carer, and you have to do the payments and all that crap. So, which is more stress on top of already mm-hmm. fucking you know. Uh, and we did have a great care was with us there for a couple of years, and she just she left there at the end of August. Um, she got a, a job in her own field, you know, a degree. Whatever. Yeah. Um, but she was from the school that Ruby used to go to. Right. So and she they're knew Ruby. so well trained. The new Ruby, but the training that they get is just. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable! They are fucking angels out there, like, um, and the way they are able to, as you say, distract or to move away from the violence mm-hmm. and to not respond, and it's really it's it's fantastic. But they, they're few and far between. We can't get somebody else. We've had a, we had a couple of interviews recently, and we got one girl in, and then um, she hadn't even met Ruby. But by the time we explained the behaviour, she was like, "It's not for me. It's too much. <laughs> too much." I find when you become a parent that you completely lose who you are. Like, I feel like it's very difficult to remember the person you were before you had kids because your life is all consumed with having kids. So I can't imagine how much extra it is then to have a child who has such special needs. Yeah, well. and I, I talk about this on stage. I try to do uh, as much as I can about uh, our experience and stuff. But I do this bit about you don't know what it's like to be a parent until you become a parent. Yeah. And, and then you look at the other fuckers who are non-parents and you Aye. go you don't fucking understand <laughs> yeah. and it's the same thing yeah. when you have a kid with additional needs until you have that kid yeah. with additional needs you don't know yeah. what that world's like you don't yeah. know the the ins and outs of it all and then you see other parents parents yeah. complaining about their kids and I'm like fuck hmm. she's just got a fucking A in her fucking <laughs> lemon plus there don't be worrying about it like she's grand like. is there any sort of like a bit thread of advice or anything that you would have for the parents who in your position who maybe have a young child and you have this sort of journey ahead of them yeah. that you can be like listen this is how I was able to have keep a bit of my own sanity or well I've, I've my wife's constantly on to me about doing a podcast on that yeah. like maybe just like a 10 episode thing of just our journey and how and how, what to look out for and the pitfalls and the things that come along I would say um, see that gap between so my wife had suspicions from say 18 months or two, I was kind of a wee bit knocked, no, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see. Mm-hmm. By the time you got to three, we both knew something wrong. But from three to five, before you get that statement, you're two years of limbo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you try and bring her to nurseries and things like that, but the violence and aggression is too much and it's not working and it's, you know, you're, you're, you're really stuck, you don't know where to go. And then yeah. A statement is just that. It's just a statement from the education authority to say your child needs to go to. Actually, here's the other thing: they don't fucking. They're not allowed to tell you your child needs to go to a special needs school. You have to figure that out for yourself. You have to figure it out yourself. Now I'm sitting in a multidisciplinary team, is what they call it, and there's 14 specialists all around me and my wife, all different fields from the school, the education authority, the trust, and all the rest. Experts. Experts. And I remember sitting going, "Listen, 
I don't care what has happened in the past because obviously they take this approach because somebody has sued them or something or yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody took offence that you said my child or yeah or something like that. Yeah. So now they will not say it. And I've sat around the table and I said, listen, we we're not we're not worrying about pride or or shame or anything they got nothing they got. We want what's best for her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So with that in mind, does she need to go to additional lead school? And they're like, you have to make that decision yourself. Yeah. I'm like, Fuck. Like. You know, you're left on your own. You really yeah. are. So I'd say to parents, don't don't be don't don't despair. Um, uh, we tried primary one. We tried the, the mainstream school. Yeah. And she got to she got to Christmas, which was good enough. In fairness, when, when we look back now, you see what where she has ended up. Yeah. But every day when you're picking her up from school, she was by herself with the teacher holding her hand. Wasn't she knew, able to integrate. No, because she knew the teacher had to speak to you because she had another child or another child. You know. And then I got to the point, I was like, fuck, there must be no children left ahead. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think, I, think the, I think the principal got battered one day. So uh, we, again, we had that meeting, which thought, right, does she need to go to the school? And the behavior at home was fucking crazy. And uh, she wasn't sleeping right at night time and stuff. And then on Christmas came, we decided over the Christmas holidays, she's going to start in the special needs school on the 1st of January or whatever it was. And the first day in that school, she slept all night. On the first day. And I'm like, what the fuck? So whatever the sensory input she was getting from was the school, what she needed. What she needed. The the rest, you know, P one at the start it's all toys and things. Mm-hmm. But eventually, the teacher's trying to get you to make, you know, yeah. shapes of letters Develop. or whatever. Yeah, she was having none of that, and there was a lot of uh, back to that PDA, the demand avoidance. Yeah. There was demands being put on her she couldn't do, and yeah. she was just avoiding. And then the, the violence would come out. So um, the change going to that school was unbelievable. And then they taught us, or they said to us was. Ruby's going to get an education here, mm. but it's not an education that you're used to. It's not an academic education. It's life skills. It's the one she needs. Yeah. 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 And she still hasn't got them, unfortunately. She still doesn't have the learning capacity yeah. on certain things. She learns all the fucking bad things, uh, which <laughs> she has what? mastered. Like, she is, she got a PhD in fucking throwing inanimate objects. Yeah, She's unreal. Yeah. <laughs> but, and, and like, get her in the shop put. <laughs> that's what I said. Special Olympic shop put. Fucking gold. Yeah. I'm, I'm, that's what I'm training for. I keep adding weights to the TV remote. <laughs> 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 you're like you're going for like triple A to double A to I'm like I'm, if I'm going to get stitches I may as well get a gold medal you know? start getting the measuring tape out and all don't you <laughs> you stand beside her calling her names <laughs> just, get just get, get a dog barking in her ear an meter it's awful <laughs> well this is the thing you see and, you know, people say to me about stand up you know and I said, that's, that's like my therapy. Yeah you know I mean I, I, um, and I remember doing a gig somewhere earlier on the year with, uh, with uh, Murphy Colin Murphy mm-hmm. and I kind of started talking with Ruby, and you could feel people. They don't know if they're get like on easy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I didn't do it again, but I did that one night. I was like, "Who the fuck are you getting offended for?" Yeah, mm-hmm. I really lost it with him on stage. Yeah. I was like, yeah. "Who the fuck? You're like, are you getting offended for Ruby? Because Ruby's not offended. Trust yeah. me, this is my fucking way and of venting with this." Hmm. I was like, "If you think your offense is going to help Ruby, it's not. <laughs> no. If you want to help Ruby, come and take her for an hour." <laughs> yeah, 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 that would yeah. be an actual help to him if you yeah. could do that. But you know, sitting there fucking going, oh, I don't know if I should have. <laughs> fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's also like I think you're no matter what the topic is, if you've a lived experience of that thing that mm. other people might find like controversial or offensive, if you've a lived experience that you've an absolute right to yeah. talk about that in any way, shape, or manner you and, want yeah. on and stage. And the good thing about it is, whenever I do it, and then whenever we do it on the podcast, because I talk a lot, an awful lot, because every week there's something fucking something happens. Um, you do get parents who do have kids with actually need messy going, oh, fuck, it's great to hear somebody else mm-hmm. is going through that and also we're not alone, but also that you can laugh at it. Yeah. I was like, well, you, you know, I do cry at it too, yeah. but there, you have to be able to laugh at it at some point, you know. But. So you'd say there about like um, finding these things out early and then any, just to finish off before we finish the podcast, any one more wee piece of advice you would have for somebody for themselves like like you say you have you've comedy that's your outlet yeah. that's something would you say finding something for yourself is important when you have such a difficult sort of home life yeah when you have a when you have a difficult home life you, you want to find something outside of that you know yeah. um, and I never thought in my lifetime that I'd be looking forward to Monday mornings hmm I look, oh, forward, me too. I look forward to Monday morning to go to work for a break, yeah. you know, because y- y- your weekend's so crazy. Um, yeah, I just, I, I, there is no right yeah. answer, you yeah. know, everybody's different, everybody has their own approach to things, mine's is, obviously the stand-up helps an awful lot, um, but I wouldn't be able to do that stand-up if it wasn't for my wife, you know, yeah. you know there's 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 a balance there, and she wouldn't be able to do work with me on the Friday and Saturdays and all, all that sort of stuff, you know. She'll have to go away on all them holidays. All them fucking holidays. She's away <laughs> four times this year. Um, but there is a there is that sort of teamwork thing. Yeah. And back to that thing about the start about, you know, 
the how these we don't you can't follow it. You don't have fucking time to follow. Yeah. It. Yeah. And when the only good thing is we did say we probably would have separated a long time ago, um, or separated the care a long time ago yeah. if she didn't sleep at night. Mm. The only good thing is she goes to bed half seven to half seven. Right. So like in our house, it's like a fucking nuclear clock up on the wall, <laughs> countdown to seven. Like, yeah. Know? Once we get close to that, it's like get her into the fucking bed. <laughs> I know. Like, but that's and like, then it's like, just like. In any household, though, I do think that hour before bedtime is fucking pandemonium. It drags too. Yeah. It's it is like the do you know what all I hear in my head the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same tune goes when yeah. the clock goes off for an hour before bed, bath time, bed time, battle of food and book. Well, and all mental. those things. So she uh, try and imagine that. So you imagine, and I remember doing it with me. So you, you're bathing a, a two year old mm-hmm. who doesn't want to be bathed, mm-hmm. doesn't want the hair washed, doesn't mm-hmm. want all that sort of stuff. Make them five times the size there. I know. And the hitting out and the the fucking thing and pulling things and battering things and. It's a fucking. It is it's a absolute, wrestling oh, match. It's a proper wrestling yeah. match. Like she's fucking Andrea Giant sometimes. Um, but yeah. it's yeah, it's back, and you do learn over the time. I mean, it's not all. Well, I was going to say it's not all negative. It is, mm. but uh, you have to try and find a positive out of it. You know what I mean? And but you know what? Yeah, you have to try and find the positive about it, but also being honest about it and being open about it is so important. I think for many other people, and well, like, there's no point lying. No, there's no point mm. me saying, "Oh, I've I've ne- I've never broke down and crying out of frustration." That, yeah, that's yeah. Lies. you do. So you fucking do. I mean, you're you're you, you can't even take a shade while they're banging on the fucking door. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? You're like, oh my god, that's, that's everyone f- knowing that one. Yeah, that's, 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 that's all kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't say all kids do that, but <laughs> no the smaller, joke when I the smaller go... kids won't be able to put the fucking door through. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like she has strength of kicking, like, and you're like, this door is gonna land on my fucking head, and I'm gonna be well, knocked um, out when we catch around my trousers or my ankles. And <laughs> what a way to go! Yeah, what a way to Elvis? go. Elvis didn't even wipe myself. Whenever I be in the toilet, Sean sends Winter down and be like mommy you doing a big shake every time I'm in the toilet and only nine Maybe. times out of ten am I doing a big shake yeah, that's some of small ones yeah. <laughs> thank yeah. you so much for yeah, coming yeah, on man, thanks for coming in no matter, thank I'm you. sure everybody who watches really appreciate the honesty and you're a fucking great guy too so thank um, you very much. keep doing what you're keep doing keep being funny keep being mama hopefully you can get some <laughs> kind of help yes hopefully. long term yeah. like fingers crossed um, is there anything you want to plug you've got your deck I have a daughter for sale if anybody wants to uh, <laughs> Very Check Cherry Young's podcast. Yeah. Genuinely, well. see if you ever need like an hour or two break. Give me a shout and I'll send Dion up. <laughs> Genuinely, Rick, right? Um, I send Winter. <laughs> thank you so much for. Fucking bad oh, fuck, I forgot you. Track yeah. it, my kids. Oh, yeah. Um, thank you so much for listening and watching, everyone. And we'll see you next week.